Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord today. We are a blessed people, able to come into the presence of God and just allow him to minister to us. Oof, we're going to stay in the presence of God. He inhabits this place. And that's why we come to be with him, to learn from him in his presence, in his glory. So, Father, we do bless you. We honor you. We thank you for meeting with us, for being with us, for loving us so much. We ask today, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, that you open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts. Just open us up, Lord, to all that you want to give us. And we say, so let it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Whew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, it's always interesting. You know, Sandra really never knows what the message is going to be. And most of the time, I don't even know. But uh, she's asking me, you know, we need to put the title up, you know, for the online audience. Welcome to the online audience this morning. And uh, so I reluctantly told her, because I like to keep things a secret. She's like, you're not supposed to keep things a secret from me, you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? But so I said, well, actually, the Lord's been talking to me that love is the foundational substance. Yeah. And so, you know, this is, I just told her a few before the beginning, and the song's all about love, right? It's about love. How the Spirit coordinates things is amazing. It's just awesome to me. Yeah. So love is the foundational Substance, and the Lord was explaining this to me this week. And he brought me first to Ephesians 1.4. Ephesians 1.4, where it says, Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him, in love. And some versions say it a little bit differently. This is the New King James. But the whole idea is, he chose you. He looked down the card of time, right? Because as he made us, he knew instantly because he's the Alpha and he's the Omega. So he knows right away. So he chose, yes, thank you. Yes, yes, my children. He knows who's going to be with him. And unfortunately, those that won't. But he chose you before anything. Before the foundation of the world, before he created it, he knew. And he wants you, he says he chose you to be holy. To be holy is to be like him, right? To be holy. So you're holy and blameless. So let it go. Let it go. If it happened to you or if you did it, let it go. Because he made you to be holy and blameless. Blameless. Before him. Before him. He wants you before him in love. In love. That's his whole idea. That's his idea. And the kingdom is that way. We see the move of the kingdom more than ever in these times. And I want to keep reminding you, and I'm sure a lot of you are perceiving it, that the Father has chosen this time. He says, this is the time of the greater glory. Where you come, and it's easier for you to perceive, because we have to be aware of it. We have to know, yeah, yeah, I say yes to it. But the kingdom... It says in Colossians 1.13, He's delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. So God wants you before Him in love. You've got to come into the kingdom, His kingdom, though. We talk about this a lot where we have two kingdoms. A lot of us were never aware of this. I never knew it, so I just lived in the world's kingdom, which is Satan's kingdom, you know, the God of this world, small g. But he lives, he coordinates the fallen world, which is darkness. If you go by that plan, it leads nowhere. Who sold you on that plan? Satan, right? Like you sold Adam and Eve. We know they bought the wrong plan. But it says the kingdom of the son of his love. The love, the love is the substance, the number one substance of the kingdom. And it's love. But you have to be born into it. Now, before the foundation of the world, God knew. 
Well, you had to get to the point where you knew that you were going to be born again, born a second time into the kingdom, receiving your rightful place, your citizenship in the glory, in the presence of God. That's where you belong. That's truly someday we'll be sitting and we'll all be in the heavenly realm where we're, there's no darkness, there's only one kingdom, and we'll all say, yeah, wow, I wish I knew that better back then. But we're learning it more and more in these times. So as we learn it, we attract more people. Because they're seeing it in you already. They're already seeing it in you. But you have to be born into it, born again. Peter says it like this in 1 Peter 1, 23. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed, through the word of God which lives and abides forever. So you're born again of not a corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed. We talk about seeds a lot in this place. I love the seed. In fact, everything is a seed. If we learn that concept, everything is a seed. Jesus says, if you don't get this parable, forget it. You're never going to get anything. Because it's all about seed. It's all about from the inside out. So he's saying here in 1 Peter 1, 23, that we are born as an incorruptible seed. The fallen world can't get to you. Now, a regular seed, the fallen world can ruin it somehow, right? An animal digs it up and eats it or, you know, the weather or something, but nothing can get to you because you're incorruptible. The seed in you, what God has designed you to be, can't be touched by the enemy. And it wants to come out. It wants to come out. For God's seed abides in him. John said that. Abide, that's the way it's supposed to be, abiding. A seed, as we know, you know, regular, a natural seed, abides. Abides in the source by which it was created. We talk about this, but the soil, right? We know that Jesus spoke everything, and those are seeds, the words that you speak. But Jesus spoke, at creation, he spoke everything into existence. It's all about words. Okay, so Jesus spoke, and when he spoke the plants into existence, he he looked to the land, to the earth, specifically the soil, and he said, trees be, and from that source came. Interesting thing is that the seed, natural seed, A natural seed, when planted, draws to itself everything that's needed. The seed doesn't think about it. He doesn't talk to the other seeds or maybe the plant. He he doesn't have to do anything. The seed, once planted, draws to itself the substance that it needs in the amount that it needs it, in the schedule that it needs it, just by abiding. As an incorruptible seed, you know the same thing, but your soil is what? It's God, it's his glory, it's his presence. Because we know when Jesus was ready to speak man into existence, he didn't look at the soil, He didn't look at the water. He looked amongst the Trinity and said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. But like the natural seed, there's substances that we need. There's different gifts that we can partake from God, you know, different... um, Gifts and talents, whether it's ministry gifts or all the blessings that he has in the heavenly realm. But there's three. There's three main ones. Because it says in the Bible, these three remain. They're eternal. They last forever. They're the foundational ones. Okay? When we get to heaven, 
I'm going to not need someone to prophesy over me. I already know everything. Okay, we're going to know. You don't need a word of knowledge. You know, you, you don't need to speak in tongues. Everybody will understand. Okay, so there's things that will, but these three things remain. We know that faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. Now, God wants you to have all three of those, and you're going to keep them forever, so you need them, and they're important. But the greatest is love. Now, with like a natural seed, I just find this very interesting, that a natural seed has three main elements that it needs. And then it needs other things. Like us, we can get other things and we can, but it needs three. I'm not a botanist, okay? But I can look into things a little bit, all right? <laughs> but so a natural seed needs nitrogen and needs phosphorus and potassium, okay? But the greatest of these is nitrogen, <laughs> right, for the seed. So the seed's just there, and somehow it knows, it knows, it knows. It draws to itself first. It just draws to itself nitrogen. How is that possible? Because God spoke that seed. And he created to do something that we, you know, like us, we stay in the presence of the glory. We need to first attract to ourselves love. It happens automatically, like the seed, but you have to stay planted. Faith, we know, comes by hearing. God wants to talk to you. He wants to tell you he loves you, right? He wants to tell you things. He wants to guide you. He's the shepherd. Hope, we know, comes by seeing. Hope, God wants to show you. Here's what I got for you. Look, this is it. This is the desire. Put it in your heart and you see it. We know that Jesus says he didn't do anything, nothing, except what he saw the Father do. So hope comes by seeing. But, uh, but love comes by abiding. Because love is God, and without love, the other elements cannot exist. There's no faith without love. There's no hope without love. So... You need to draw love. Love is the foundational substance. Now, the normal plant, the seed, draws to itself from the soil nitrogen. And then it needs the phosphorus, and, and, you know, and it needs the potassium, and it needs all these other you know, nutrients. And then there's trace minerals that it gets, but it has to do it in order. God's got perfect order. He's going to order for us. Sometimes we're out there looking for the trace minerals. Oh, I want that fruit. I want to, I, I need to, you know. And we're looking around. We're, we're not focusing on, on the foundational stuff. We're looking around. Like some of you, I can see you popping your head out of the soil looking around, right? <laughs> How's that plant doing? Oh, why is that plant already grown? You know, I want that. No, get, get back down. Get, get back down. It's like that thing of, what is that, the convo? You know, you just whack that thing's head, the alligators or whatever. But get, stay planted, stay planted. It reminds me of, now, if you, ha if you could talk to a plant, Daniel, you could you'd probably pick up on this. Or Joshua, whoever's paying attention back there. Noah. <laughs> But if you had a plant and you could talk to it, if there was a plant that you could talk to, right? Like we have a lot of plants on this side. So if you had a plant called rose, right? Rose bush, okay? And she's out there, you know, she's like doing really good. She's great. She's still blooming because of that's awesome. So she's doing good out there. She's great. But if she comes to us, she will go out there looking and she says, I've had it with this. I'm moving on. I'm pulling up and I'm moving on. I want a better view. I want people to see me. I'm moving out to the parking lot. <laughs> and she makes her way out there, you know, she pulls her roots out. And me and Daniel, we'll go up to her and say, Rose, this is not going to work for you. You have to stay planted in the source from which you came. 
yeah, but it's nice out here. I got a better view. People see me. Look how beautiful I am. I want people to recognize me. Rose, it's not going to work. Eventually, hopefully, we talk her out of it and put her back. But should, and what, we all do the same thing. I know we have a lot of gardeners in here. But how much more consideration should we have for us and ourselves and each other? You've got to come back. You've got to stay connected. You've got to stay connected to God or else you're going to wither. The flowers are going to be droopy. Like the corruptible seed, us as incorruptible seeds, we have to draw things in proportion in, in, in the sequence that God has already planned inside of you to do. And so we build, right? We build first the strength. God will not give you if you're just a thin plant with one little branch, he's not going to give you a giant cluster of grapes because it's just going to break the whole thing. It's going to ruin you. So God knows best. We're looking, we're looking for the things, for the trace minerals. And God's saying, you're not, you're not ready. Your strength of character is not there yet to hold it. And a lot of people are like, they just always, I always wanted this. I always wanted to be at the end of the branch. I always wanted the fruit. I want the flower. I want the leaves. Yeah, no one's happy with just, you know, the little plant that's just, you know, but that's where it is. That's where we have to stay. Stay. You get that right. God, the grapes will come. God wants you to have all the blessings in the heavenly realm. He wants you to have all the gifts that he's decided for you, but we have to do it in a sequence. We have to do it according to how God's already planned things out before the foundation of the world. But we need help because we've all tried it. might be saying, yeah, well, I, I, that's right. I mean, poor Rosebush, I can feel it. But me, I do the same thing. I come out and I'm going for this and where I should be here, staying, maybe still thinking of the fruit of the leaves of wanting to do all the ministry and all of the blessings and have all of the riches and glory. But first, I have to be rooted and grounded in love. Without love, none of the other gifts can sustain themselves. And love comes simply by abiding. God is love. He made you in his image and in his likeness. And Jesus really, comm he's, he commanded just a couple things when he came. First, he said, if you love me, if you love me, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. So if you wonder, okay, does God, you know, am I loving God? Am I really? If you love me, Jesus said himself, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. And all that he commanded, which is everything and every promise in the word, he boiled it down to these two when he was asked. He said, these commands I give you. First, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And then, love your neighbor as yourself. Love the other person next to you, the person in the body, especially, right? Because you have to be a believer to be part of this. Because God knows love is given to be able to be received. Love is not something that just stays still. Love is what flows between the Trinity. It flows between the body. It's like the blood of Jesus. That's why Jesus used the blood. It flows to all the body parts, right? It's supposed to come. It's supposed to move. And Jesus knows everything that you give, you receive. If you want to receive something, give it. If you want a new car, help somebody pay off their loan, their auto loan. Oh, that doesn't make sense. Not in the world system. But you get what you give. It's just the way of the kingdom. So God knows if you will, if he commands you to love God, oh, you're going to get that back. 
Try this when you come before him, you know, like in the morning, and you just say, Lord, oh, what do you got? What do you have for me? What's going on in your heart? And you, know, you feel his presence, you feel his love, you love him back, you give it all back to him. Ooh, he loves that, he gives it back to you twice as much. You know, try that. It's a, it's a whole new way. Jesus says, if you love me, you obey my commandments. And it is about love. If we love God with all hearts, we listen. We love God with all our hearts and our neighbors as ourselves. First, we've got to love God so that we love ourselves. Most of us are like, yeah, I can love my neighbor like myself. I don't even like me. And that's why I treat them so bad. <laughs> that's not the way to do it. We want to be, want, know the love of God, which ha- is the same love. And we become full of love. And then we give it. We give it to other people. But we need help. We all agree that I need help. We need help. I need help. And something that I think that we skip, and of course we have an enemy that tries to make us skip things or forget things, but we have a helper. God is three persons. Three persons, and the Holy Spirit doesn't get a lot of credit, even though he's doing everything. He's the one doing everything here with you. And you can't do anything without him. He can't. We can't do anything without him. Jesus told the disciples, Don't do anything, please. You're going to totally mess this up. Just go sit in the other room. Okay, stay. Just stay there. And then power. Power. You need the power. The power will come upon you. We need the power in order to stay planted, abide. We need the power to have faith. We need the power to hope. It says here in 2 Corinthians 3.18, being transformed into the same image of Jesus from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Oh, Holy Spirit, will you ask for forgiveness too? It's the Holy Spirit that's transforming you, that's bringing that which God already put in you, Jesus spoke, bringing it, out so that you can be this beautiful plant with the roses, the fruit, the leaves, the big branches, the strong, whatever. He's making, he's transforming you from glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord. So seek him first. He's a person like Jesus, not a bird, right? Doesn't have beak. He doesn't He came down as a symbol, but he is real. And his whole job is to help you transform, to get these things, to put power to your faith, put power to your hope, your vision. He is the one that makes things happen, brings things from the glory to you so you can change. So we got to stay planted, but we need the Holy Spirit to do that, to keep us where we need to be. Remember, the seed, you're an incorruptible seed that just draws it. It You draw from the glory. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to figure it out. You don't have to say, oh, which one comes first? Do I need to do this? No, God will give you the gifts. He'll give you everything, give you the resources, He'll give you everything. But first, you have to say yes. So unlike the corruptible seed, the incorruptible seed, we get to say no. The seed has no choice. It's like, yeah, I'm here. I'm not going to move. I can't move. I'm just going to receive. We have to say yes. Because we have dominion. If you say yes, yes, Lord, I agree. You're going to do it. Whatever you put in me, it's going to come out. It's going to come out. Perfect. God, it's going to be awesome. And then it happens. we got to come say, Holy Spirit, I'm agreeing with you. And I'm going to become what you want me to become. The Father has designed and Jesus spoke. And I'm going to let you do it. You know, in these times, more than ever, because you're going to see the glory continually increase. It's just the, the Father... And Jesus, Holy Spirit, showing up because there has to be a time, and this is it, where people can't, they're without excuse anyway, but they can't deny the fact that the kingdom is real and God is real. Because there's a lot of people that's stuck in the darkness, that have already chosen the darkness, but there's that remnant, that element that's not sure, but they're going to make the move because of what they see in the kingdom of God. But you know, God, he created us, and we're going to become that part of that, what he created us to be. But it all comes down to 
being like a lamb and a lion. In the kingdom, when we come in the kingdom like incorruptible seed, we act like a sheep. We don't do anything unless the shepherd tells us. We just submit and surrender and receive. When you come into the kingdom like we do here, we look to the throne room. We look to the Lord. We look into. But then there's times when you're ready, right? Because after you've got the love and your faith and, and you have the hope, you got, then you build with boldness, and then you build this. You build your, your ministry gifts, and you build, you get stronger and stronger. Your character can handle it. And then God says, stay in the glory, but turn now against the fallen world, and you become a lion. And you attack that which he tells you to attack and eliminate the fallen things that we're well aware of today. But you can't do it on your own. You have to do it in the glory, becoming that lamb or, or that lion specifically that God has created you to be. So, Father, we love you so much, and we honor you. And we just say, Lord, we're grateful that you made us in such a way, incorruptible. Nothing of this fallen world can affect us. Oh, we plan ourselves, Lord, in your glory. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you help us to stay where we need to stay. Oh, we receive the love. We receive your love. We receive your love, your faith in your hope, and we get stronger and stronger and stronger so we become fully and completely all that you want us to be. To represent you, to bring life more abundantly, and destroy the works of the enemy. Hallelujah. We say yes in Jesus' name.